Caleb Sweethands Plant, IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World. And if you're looking to take your training to the next level or even be a world champion like myself, I suggest Victor Cate's Fighters Training Sack. It's got everything you need. Hey, congrats, Steve. Hey. Thank you. Um, I want to start just by asking you about your weight. I, everybody, I think, was shocked that you came in as light as you was. Was it because you wanted to get more quickness based on what you saw in the first fight? Not at all. Uh, I have a child now, so I don't want to have a dad bod. So it's mostly just trying to keep my body in shape so I look good. You know, cause I want to, you know, I want a dad bod. No, I, honestly, uh, with the whole weight thing, I, I I was eating a ton of food. And I was drinking water. And I just I was training hard and just and it, it's been a hot summer too. And so. But I, I mean, it just, it just came off. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, listen, I, feel, I felt so efficient. I felt strong. I felt amazing. Uh, you know, I just, uh, just started off a little slow, but, you know, we're good. You went to the body shots. Uh, did the corner tell you that, or was that something instinctively that you saw? I mean, yeah, it's something I saw. I actually talked to my coach earlier in the week about it. And I was like, man, I was like, I remember always lifting his arms up when he throws punches or blocks punches, and I was like, you know what? I mean, no one really tests his body. I'm going to start going. And I remember when Anderson Silva fight, UFC 200, he caught him with a body shot and a kick. I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's a little weaker than I thought. You know, so, uh, and I hit him with a couple of them, and I saw him wince. And when you, um, when you were in the early part of the fight, you know, he was landing some shots. He had his hands down. Was that frustrating? Because I know you, you're a good boxer, and yet he's in there right in front of you with his hands at his side, and he's still landing on you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it sucks, you know, a couple times, I don't know if he was, I don't know, I feel like I was getting poked in the eye, but maybe he wasn't, I don't know, I just, uh, I, I was a couple times, I'm like, God, is, is that a finger, like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if it was a knuckle, I, I, I mean, I wasn't trying to bitch about it, but it just, I, I don't know if it was, but, uh, you know, we overcame it, and, uh, you know, he, he, listen, he's an amazing fighter, you know, he, he makes people feel uncomfortable in there, and he did, you know, he did that for the first two rounds, but then uh, I started getting my bearing straight, I saw him slowing down, I'm like, okay, this is where I gotta take it now. And then lastly for me, uh, where do you want to go? I mean, Dana talked about he was going to talk to you. Do you do a trilogy with DC? Do you rematch Francis? I mean, do you have any thought? I know you just won the belt, but any, any idea <laughs> where you That's the number one question go? after every time about who are you going to fight next? Uh, uh, honestly, I, listen, I just bought a new home. Uh, new home. Been there for two weeks. I'm going to go in the hot tub, the pool, let my body rest, and we can figure it out from there. Cool. Congrats again. Thank you, sir. Steve, you're right in the middle here. Oh, yeah. In the first round, uh, Daniel picked you up and he got you in the slam. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was up there for like an hour. What was that? I thought we were doing like WWE or something. Is he like, is he like calling me out? I don't know. I, I, it was weird. It was weird, but also, you know, what does it feel like for you to be prone in that position? We've never seen you in that position. Ah, it happens. Before. I mean, listen, it's a fight, anything can happen, you know. And, uh, you know, he's giving me some good shots on bottom, but I wasn't really worried. You know, I was smart about it. You know, he's tough. He's, good. he's a great, amazing wrestler. And, uh, you know, I just... Uh, like I said, I just started off slow in that first two rounds. It just wasn't, it wasn't me. And I just, in that third round, I knew I was a better fighter. And that's when I just, it gets a little calmer, man. It's, it's nothing but adversity. It's awesome. That's how we're doing here in Cleveland. All week, you seem to be making googly eyes at your daughter. We uh, saw you at the weigh-in. We saw you beautiful. at the Beautiful, you? How much was she in your mind as you were in the uh, cage? She's always in my mind. It's my homie. It's my sidekick. You know, no matter what happens in this fight game, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna fight. Win, lose, or draw. I'm swinging, I'm going out there, but as long as I know I'm going home to my daughter, that's all I care about. And did it occur to you that you actually finished DC in the same exact position where Jones finished him in this building a couple years ago? I don't really care about that. I care about that I got this bad boy back, and I can go home to my daughter. Stupid right here in front of you. Uh, curious what you make of that new belt compared to the one you had before. It's a belt, it's a belt man. I'm champ again, so all I care about. Um, where did you learn that celebration after the? Uh, dude, I honestly, I kind of, I guess it was a little old school. We watched it today, and I, I kind of franked the tanked it. I just like had no idea what I was doing. I kind of just like lost. I don't know why I did it. I, was, I feel really dumb. I did it, and then, then I did like the socket. I, I don't know why. I just, I feel like I, I didn't know do, do something with my hands or my feet, and I just, I don't know. I'm an idiot. I just, I'm dumb. Is it like uh, just adrenaline that takes yeah, over? Yeah, I think adrenaline you're... takes over. You know, I'm just like, I'm that guy at a party that does dumb stuff, you know. Like, oh, why would you do that? But it's fun. Right. And I, feel, I think a lot of people going to that fourth round maybe had Daniel up 2-1 or 3-0. Um, you had, I think, the second largest statistical comeback in a championship fight in terms of being, like, outlanded and then yeah. finishing the fight. What's going through your mind, you know, when maybe you're, you're getting hit a lot? He hit you with a lot of big shots. What was yeah. going through your mind at those points? Stop fighting like a bitch. I mean, I was fighting like a bitch. It really was, and uh, you know, I, I take nothing from DC, man. Dude's tough. You know, he's he's he fought the best, really. He's beat the best in the world, and uh, 
You know, I just finally, you know, I just, it took me a little time to get like my, my, my mojo. And I just, I, I just couldn't feel it. I just couldn't feed in. And uh, my one coach told me, he's like, man, when you walked in that fourth round, I knew it was going to be over. He's like, I just see your face, the way your swagger, your hips were moving. He's like, I knew it was going to be good. I know you said you don't want to think about what's next, but I know DC tried to kind of stick it to you a little bit about waiting out for the rematch and all that kind of stuff. If he does choose to continue fighting, is there any part of you that kind of wants to stick it back to him a little bit? Yeah, I mean, whatever, man. I'm down for whatever. But like, right now, I just want to rest. I want to heal up. I'm going to be 37 on Monday. I feel like I'm 98 right now. And, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Steve, Steve after, after the win. What's that? Sorry. After the win, you had both Dana and John Jones say you're the greatest heavyweight of all time. That's cool. Uh, does that mean something to you? And, and where do you think you stand in those rankings? I mean, that's awesome, especially John Jones saying that. And Dana, it's, it's real cool, man. Um, it's, it's, it's cool to be uh, known for your accomplishments. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, I just want my daughter to be proud of me. You know, my dad did something in his life. My dad, you know, he fought for a living to give me a better life. You know, that's all I care about. So I guess in the end, is legacy, I mean, is legacy. No, it's all about legacy now. At first I'm like, yeah, fuck the legacy. Now I'm like, that's all about legacy. You know, have, have a good legacy. Found me a legacy where I'm a good dude, you know. I'm a tough fighter. You know, I've, I've gone through adversity. I've done a lot, you know. I mean, listen, never been an easy road. I don't mind it. I like, I like it hard because it makes it that much sweeter. And then lastly, I said John, John mentioned you were the best heavyweight of all time. Is that a fight that interests you at some point? Uh, you guys are killing me with these fights. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, say I'll, I always say I'll fight anyone, honestly. It was really cool to say. Um, appreciate it. Hope he's doing well. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to fight anyone. No more who you fight next questions, though, okay? Please, I beg of you. I'm joking. You guys can ask. Hey, Steve, way down over here. So yeah. you're right up. Who, who do you want to fight next? No. Uh, just this, you're never coming to Fire Station again. <laughs> you're out. Uh, DC had uh, 181 significant strikes. It was the most ever in a loss in UFC history. Mm -hmm. First time you guys fought, you lost in the first round. He ate you with one punch. Did anything change? Did you kind of know what was coming more? How were you able to absorb so many, so many blows? Well, I just, I don't know. Um, I just, I knew I was a better fighter. And I just, like I said, those first two rounds looked really bad. I know they looked really bad. Uh, he was, he was, he was teeing off on me. And uh, I just, I just like, dug down deep, man. You know, so it's a Midwest thing, dude. Uh, what kind of ribbing are you going to get uh, when you go back to the fire station? Oh, uh, it's going to be terrible. I don't think I'm going to work again. I might quit. They're going to destroy me. It's not going to be fun. You're trying to go full time. It's got to work. Uh, well, I, I got no choice then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they may bring up that dance at the end. At the oh, 100%. They're going to make me do it on the front of the apron. It's going to be terrible. <laughs> it's going to be awkward. And uh, last thing for me, you weighed in at 230 pounds. Um, yeah. There's no way you're going. you could go to 205. Oh, God, no. No chance, right? No. No, 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 no. That's... That was crazy. I don't. I, I can't believe it weighed that much. But yeah, I, I it just like I said, I just wasn't trying anything. I was just working out hard and just eating good and just you know drinking a ton of water. Drinking. I mean, I, I no joke. I would go and get like a burger just to like. Cause I was like, what the hell? So I would, I would get. I would eat shitty food once in a while just to like see what it helped. And nothing. I just kind of. I mean, I, went, I did a crowd machine during the week. They're like, you're gonna stop swimming the minute you get in there. I was still sweating while I was in there. I'm like, hope I don't get frostbite. It'd be terrible. Like that with the Tony Brown. I'm gonna be terrible, right? Clean fight. It'd be terrible. But anyway. But hey, buddy, thanks for the article. It was a great article, by the way. You did. Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, so you were just being honest about getting beat up those first couple of rounds. Oh, 100%. Yeah, in, in hindsight now, it doesn't matter because you won, but yeah. was there ring rust? Was there jitters? Was there an adrenaline dump? What I, was it? I, don't, I, you know, I don't think it was an adrenaline dump. I think it was more like the ring rust and just, uh, just you know, getting my bearing straight. I just, uh, you know, he's a tough guy. And he's really awkward. He makes it awkward for you. That's what, that's what he's good at. And I think he just, um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, it just took me a little bit. You know, but hey, like you said, and in his sprints or the marathon. Yeah. So he said that he let his coaches down. He feels like he let his coaches down by not wrestling. Did you, did you expect him to try to take you down more? Yeah, I mean, he got me that first day down. I, I felt comfortable. I got angry, and I, and I, idiot. I just, I didn't do what I was supposed to. I've been working on the whole camp. And then uh, he, uh, he lifted me up like, I don't know. I, I thought he was going to start walking around the octagon or something. You know, he's like, Chica, you know, I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then uh, and after that, I felt good. You know, he did it again. I sprawled on him, and, and I started feeling more comfortable. Started, I knew he was getting tired. I'm like, okay, so it's gonna be a lot easier for me, because he's an amazing wrestler. He's an amazing fighter, and uh, so uh, yeah, I just, I mean, listen, like, w trust me. When you lose, you feel like you let your coaches down. Like that's why I did last fight. I feel like I let my coaches down. So obviously, you had the joy of your daughter to oh. keep you company all this time. But were there any times dur during that wait, waiting to get that rematch, that that it did get a little dark for you, and that you didn't, you know, you thought maybe it wouldn't come, or, or it didn't? Uh, no, I don't know. I love, I love that whole year was awesome. Spending the whole year with her, you know, getting to wake up at six in the morning, you know, changing a poopy diaper—it's awesome.
No, but I, I honestly wouldn't change it for I'm so happy. I got, we're so, me and my wife are so blessed to have such an amazing daughter. She's such a good kid. And certainly it gives you an opportunity to heal up from any sort of lingering injuries you may have had anyway then. Oh, uh, 100%. Well, it wasn't that bad. I think it was more mental. Mental and just letting my body recharge, you know, because I, I mean, I, I don't know. Some guys, I don't know if I, some guys can do it. I can't, but I get, if I'm go, 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 eventually I'm just going to wear down. And just mentally and physically, I was kind of just drained. Awesome. Well, congrats. Thank you. Stipe over here. Uh, I'm just joking. On your left. Right here. Okay, I see What's you. Up? All right, so Stipe, obviously there was a lot of talk about what would be next for Daniel, you know, John Jones trilogy, et cetera, et cetera. I know you just want to focus on your fight, but now that you're on the other side of it, how much did it bother you that everyone was talking about that and they just seemed to be overlooking you a bit? I'm used to it. I'm not worried about it. Listen, it's the game we're in. You know, I mean, people want to see this fight. People want to see that fight. Listen, I'm tapping on my opportunity and look what I got back. Hey, Steve, hey, just one for me. Uh, oh. Congrats on the win, first Thank you. and foremost. Thank you. Oh, you. you know, uh, Daniel had the really special privilege of sitting down with his kids and watching that E60 special on him. When you talk about legacy, when you have in uh, inevitably get your own E60, what do you want your daughter to take away from it when she's older? Just, you know, like, there's, like, so, like, there's a lot of reasons why I wanted this flight. Honestly, I think about it more and more. There's a lot of reasons, not just about me, but it was a lot about me, but like, I just knew I was a better fighter, but then like, I wanted to show my daughter that, you know, there's, 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 times get tough, you know, some things that happen, you just gotta get back up and just, you know, dust yourself off. But then also, a bunch of guys at the station's kids, they, when I lost, they cried. They all cried, and that really bothered me. You know what I mean? It just, it just, it just irked me, not in a bad way, just, I just, you know, I'm like, listen, you know, it, and, and then, and I want to show them that, like, listen, sometimes, you know, like, oh, just my daughter, sometimes it doesn't happen, but you just kind of, you know, and there's a lot of reasons why I just, I want this fight. It's just, you know, more for me, too, because I think it was a better fighter, but, and for my daughter to show her that, like, you know, things get tough, you get a little, you know, a lot of adversity, it's okay, you know, you just got to push through, but, uh, but also with my, a bunch of guys at the fire station, kids were crying, and they went after that loss, you know, I'm like, I was like, what happens, you know, it's life, and I was like, it's okay, and so I'm going to show them that, listen, you're fine, get back, get it back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Steve, hey, just quickly, I wanted to, over here, I just wanted to elaborate. You said before that it, it wasn't about legacy originally, but now it is. You gave me the example about how you wanted to set a good example for, you know, some of the kids in the, in the fire station and stuff. But as far as how you are seen by the MMA community as some of the all-time greats, when did that change for you? When, when did you decide? Because you've said a lot of times you didn't really care about respect and things like that. When did it, the legacy become important to you? I think when I had my daughter. You know, I just show her that, like, you know, like, listen, your dad, your dad's a tough dude, you know. He went out there and, you know, he got beat up a couple of times and he beat a couple of guys up, you know, and just, uh, he needed well at it. He was good at what he did. And that's when I show her that no matter what you do in life, you work hard, you know, you can build your legacy no matter what it is. Thanks, guys. This is so awkward. It's like, I feel like I'm, like, getting hungry.